The clerk will read the next item of business. Notice of motion, General Notice Number 2485, Australian South Sea Islanders. I call the member for Sydney. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I move that this House, one, notes the 25th of August 2013 as Australian South Sea Islander Recognition Day, marking 150 years since about 50,000 people on 62,000 indenture contracts from around 80 Pacific Islands were recruited or kidnapped to work in sugar cane fields where they were exploited. Two, notes the Australian South Sea Islanders suffered inhumane treatment, the highest mortality rates of any immigrant group, any, any immigrant group to Australia, and mass deportations when the White Australia policy was introduced. Three, notes many of the 40,000 Australian South Sea Islander descendants who live in Australia remain marginalised and disadvantaged. Four, notes thousands of Australian South Sea Islanders live in New South Wales, but an official number has not been established. Five, notes then Premier Carr's memorandum of understanding of 1995 called for adequate programs and services. Six, acknowledges the Community Relations Commission's initiatives in relation to South Sea Islanders and requests the government to liaise with the national body for Australian South Sea Islanders in preparing a demographic, social and economic community profile. Seven, acknowledges the contribution the Australian South Sea Islander community makes to New South Wales and its history in Australia. Mr Speaker, I would also like to welcome Danny Togo, Cherie Malamu and Lola Forrester to the Chamber, community leaders of the South Sea Islander community. Today is a very historic day for New South Wales Parliament as we come together to acknowledge the suffering, the exploitation and the role in our history that Australia's South Sea Islanders have played. I'd like to start by, by thanking Minister Dominello and his staff um, for uh, agreeing to meet with the South Sea Islanders and, and to work with them, uh, and indeed for the, the government's support of, of the motion. Between 1863 and 1904, about 50,000 people were recruited or kidnapped from around 80 Pacific Island, Islands to work in sugarcane fields in Queensland on 62,000 indenture contracts. 95% were adolescent and young, and young adult males. The rest were women. In the first two decades, kidnappings and underhand recruitments were prevalent, and although recruitments became more common in later years, kidnappings account for about 10 to 15% of labourers throughout. I have heard shocking stories of islanders being coerced on boats, having their canoes sunk, and being detained through force. Even recruitment contracts took advantage of islanders who came from small-scale societies, were paid cheap goods and legally bound in a way that they could not understand. Islanders were often cruelly exploited. They were beaten, starved, whipped. Rare police inspections were not unannounced. Justice was rare in cases brought to the courts. In the 1870s, the Reverend J.C. Kirby described seeing a group of islanders walking through Dalby without shoes accompanied by armed men on a horseback as a scene out from Uncle Tom's cabin. Australian South Sea Islanders see themselves as descendants of slaves. And indeed, many people regard this as Australia's slave trade. Coming from isolated islands, islanders lacked immunity to common diseases, causing massive mortality rates including from tuber tuberculosis, pneumonia, bronchitis, dysentery, measles and chickenpox. 81, of one uh, 81 out of 1,000 islanders died in their first year in Australia, and overall 74 out of 1,000 died. At the time, mortality rates for Australian Europeans of the same age were 9 to 10 in 1,000. While official records show 14,564 islanders died. The true figure is likely over 15,000, giving data collection gaps. Yet the Australian government continued the program for over 40 years, knowing its impact. In 1901, the Australian government passed the Pacific, Islanders, uh, Pacific Island Labourers Act as part of its White Australia policy to then remove islanders from the country through gradual attrition and forced deportation. Sugar farmers were compensated with an embargo on foreign sugar, and subsidies for sugar were produced. Uh, subsidies for sugar produced by white labour. There were mass forced deportations between 1906 and 1908. Protests from islanders led to exemptions for those who had lived in Australia for over 20 years. 
were aged or infirm, had children in school, owned land, or were married to someone not from their island, or could prove safety risks if they returned home. About 2,000 to 2,500 remained, and most Australian South Sea Islanders are descendants of this group. Incentives in the sugar industry to hire white-only labour relegated islanders to menial farm work or subsistence. They lived on the fringes and suffered discrimination. This is a shameful chapter in Australia's history. And Australian South Sea Islander Recognition Day on the 25th of August is a time to reflect and a time to move forward for the 40,000 descendants whose social and economic disadvantage is equivalent to Aboriginal Australians. Many descendants live in New South Wales, but there are no official figures. If people identify as Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander, they can also not identify as Australian South Sea Islander, despite the widespread amalgamations of, of Islanders and Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islander communities. Australian South Sea Islanders can access education, housing, health and legal programs aimed at Indigenous Australians, but there are no specific programs for them, despite being defined as a distinct disadvantaged ethnic group. In 1995, then Premier Carr's Memorandum of Understanding called for adequate services to target Australia's South Sea Islanders. Australian South Sea Islanders want self-determination, and it is vital to and, and vital to this is acknowledgement of past atrocities and data on the current state of affairs. The state government should involve the national representative body of Australian South Sea Islanders to provide a democratic, demographic, social, and economic community profile and develop a plan of action to remove disadvantage in line with the 1992 Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission report recommendations. I acknowledge that the Minister, Minister Dominello, has agreed to meet with the national body in response to this motion, and I'm grateful to him for that. The 150th anniversary provides an opportunity to make a formal recognition statement to help build community esteem and a positive future. I commend the motion. <laughs>